everyone. Thanks for joining me for another episode of the Female Empowered Podcast. I'm your host, Krista Gurka. And today I have my right hand, I guess you say man, but woman at Pilates in the Grove. And also um, recently a new founding kind of offshoot to our Beyond the Movement mentorship programs. Lauren Amron is here. She is our... Um, She's the chief operating officer at Pilates in the Grove. And we also recently, when did we do it? At the beginning of the year? Start the Grove program? Yeah. Our first meeting was February. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's just been, we're two months in and we started an offshoot of the Beyond the Movement mentorship programs called grow. And Lauren heads up the program. And so what we're going to talk about today is a little bit about that offering in our suite of offers and also what it does, who it helps, who it serves. But first, I would love for you, Lauren, because it's been a while since you've been on the podcast, if you would just introduce yourself again and let us know a little bit about your background and what you do at Pilates in the Grove. Yeah, of course. So as Krista said, um, I've been actually the COO at Pilates in the Grove just past my one year anniversary. And um, my background is really in consulting. My education is law and um, finance. I have an MBA in finance and a law degree. And I've worked in consulting for many years in different industries, in-house a little bit, and then um, with some consulting firms. And then most recently, when Krista approached me to take this job, I took over and basically run the back end part of the business of Pilates in the Grove. So all the things that happen sort of behind the scenes are on my plate. Um, and then Krista had suggested that we add to the offerings of her coaching program with this product. So that's um, how we started the Grow program. Yeah. Well, I actually think it was your idea. It might have been. We um we when we had our summit uh for the inner circle and some of the other coaching program members uh in November, I think it was here in Miami, um, some of the participants were chatting with us after a presentation that I did um and asking some questions. And so then I think it sort of happened organically from that that we said maybe we could offer something that would be useful to those people and their support people. Um, and that's sort of the genesis of the idea uh, for this program. Yeah. So I'll tell you guys a little bit about what Lauren does for me in such a amazing, competent capacity. Um, so, you know, running a business, you have a lot of balls in the air, especially as a small business owner. There's a lot of stuff that goes into a business besides just providing a service. Like, so yes, I'm a physical therapist. Yes, I'm a Pilates instructor. And I mean, Lauren's known the business actually for since its inception. So, you know, the, we were just talking about this yesterday when we first started, you know, as business owners, I'm, you're doing everything. You're answering the phones, you're returning the emails, you're taking the payments, you're building the website. You're teaching the class, you're doing the physical therapy, you're doing the notes, you're providing insurance receipts, cleaning the bathroom, buying the equipment, fixing the equipment, marketing your services, trying to learn social media, payroll, bookkeeping, taxes, um, applying for your licenses, um, sales tax. I mean, the list goes on and on. And then there's the little things that just happen from time to time the toilets leaking, the air conditioning breaks. Um, we need to order more business cards. We're out of merch or we want to start doing merch or we don't have like this machine is squeaking or this thing is leaking in the ceiling tile. We need water. There's like a plethora of things that go on, especially when you have a physical location. And then as you grow, you need more stuff, right? So, you know, I say this to people all the time, like bigger isn't necessarily always better. Um, bigger is just bigger. So, and then there becomes a point where 
you have to get help because there's just not enough time in the day, nor does a business owner have enough strat- uh, enough energy bandwidth. So Lauren has really taken a lot of like the day-to-day things that happen and future planning. So because she's not on the schedule as a provider, she has the ability to say like when the, when the toilet, like this just happened literally Friday, good Friday, Easter weekend, she was able to say, you know, one of the instructors said there's water coming out of the floor. She was able to call the plumber. That plumber didn't answer. She was able to call another plumber. That plumber couldn't do it. She was able to follow up on Monday to get someone in. Like if someone needs to be there, she's like, I'll go meet them. The air conditioning breaks. She planned the party that we had for a couple of our instructors that just celebrated 10 years. So a lot of things that I can say, this is what we're going to do. She takes and implements. Besides that, she does our payroll. So she makes sure that our staff is getting paid, which is a very important role. And she uh, makes sure that it's correct. She handles like if there's a problem with our processor or scheduling software, she'll reach out to them to deal with that because we all know how long sometimes you can sit on the phone for a while. She manages our PL. So if there's stuff, she talks directly to the bookkeeper. She can make deposits. She can take money out. She can order basically anything that r- involves ordering. So what she's done besides all of those little tasks and big tasks, she has become the buffer and liaison between myself and the rest of the team. So everyone kind of goes to her first and then she deciphers what information needs to be directed to me, if at all. So it's, I mean, she's amazing at what she does and I'm super, super fortunate to have her on the team. And she has, she's also like a very, you're a very critical thinker in terms of like, not just task oriented, but looking at the bigger picture, which is very helpful when a business is growing. She was so helpful to me. And, and again, this is why we work really well together. She was part of the summit in which she like planned pretty much the whole thing. And she did a presentation of what she does for me. And so of course, all the other business owners were like, well, how do I find you? Like, how do I get one of you? And the hard part for businesses is that most business business owners, when luckily when I hired Lauren, I had already gone through two operations people. So there was stuff taken off my plate. So I did have time to train her and onboard her really well, even though she didn't need that much of it. But most business owners, the thought they want the role, right? They're like, I need this person. But the thought of training a person is like daunting and overwhelming because it's, it's a lot. Right. And so Lauren was the one that came up with this idea of like, all these people are asking for questions. What if we held a group that was for the support team? So we develop GROW, which stands for um, Growth Resources Opportunities for the Workforce. Um, And so Lauren basically heads it up and I'm going to let her describe a little bit about who it's for and what she does in the program. And then we'll kind of get through like even like more of the nuances. So who directly, who will benefit from the GROW program? So I think that Anyone in a support role in a boutique fitness business could benefit from the program, depending on their level of exposure and expertise already in their role, um, might sort of guide which parts of it are more valuable to them. But I would say that the people in the group right now, we have eight people participating in this first cohort. Some are multiple individuals working in the same business. But there's eight individuals in there now, and they um, they range from front desk support, like strict administrative support, to practice management and sort of everything in between. Um, and one of the things that I thought was really valuable about it that was organic, not really by design, was that they all have different backgrounds from their roles prior to their current position. So you have people that had recruiting backgrounds, people that had marketing backgrounds, um, a variety of 
demographics in terms of age and area of the country, um, which is really helpful because it brings a whole other set of resources to the table when the cohort, in addition to having me as a resource or our, our materials that we can share, they have each other as a resource. And so one of the main, I guess, pillars of the program is a Slack channel where the group can communicate with me directly, basically on an on-call basis within reason and each other as a group. So I think that's something that's really helpful just sort of as a as an unintended benefit mm -hmm. of the process. In terms of what the group is doing, we are, because it's our first cohort, we're sort of learning as we go, but um, trying to establish those framework pillars or tenets of what I do every day. So there's like a few main areas or disciplines that are going to be like of primary concern. So um, I don't know, do you want me to go into the specifics of how yeah. we work it out? Okay. Sure. So for the first meeting, other than just getting a feel for who everyone was and what their greatest challenges and greatest areas of success were at the moment, in their own opinions, um, we went over communication. So how are we communicating? Not so much with the clients. I feel like everyone kind of has that, or maybe that's a little bit more of a marketing topic, but um, with each, with their staff that are sort of under them or a, on the same level as them and with their owners or CEOs. So simple things that we found to be helpful for us that we were able to share uh, with the group, you know, including monthly meetings, Google agendas, checklists, uh, you know, tasks, things like that. The second session we've done, we've only done two so far. <clears throat> the second session we did project management because as we had our first discussion, we learned that there's the day-to-day -day tasks and the recurring tasks that are day-to-day -day or periodic, episodic, but then there's also the sort of big projects. And it's hard in the role where I sit, which is sort of the middle management role, right? So you're like, you have your owner or your CEO above you, if you're in an org chart, and you have like your staff, instructors, um, admin team below you. So you kind of get it from both ends like a sandwich. And so <clears throat> you it's easier to keep track if you have some, some systems in place to do that. And so we talked about project management, both for things that are happening every day. For example, we shared a front desk checklist, literally like turn off the alarm, put the lights on, check if there's water in the fridge, check the AC, take the trash out, you know, basic stuff. But it helps to have a list, especially when you're training new people, because some of it is so second nature to those of us who have done it for a long time, you forget to tell them those details, who to call when the parking garage gate breaks, <laughs> you know, things like that. <laughs> you need to know where those resources are because they're important. They're really important. I mean, the, the plumber thing is probably the most important thing that happened in that day, right? So um, that stuff, and then the big stuff, if you're gonna run a special event, here's our template or our checklist of things that we always do when we're gonna plan a special event or even a marketing promotion. We did one of those too and shared that. Um, our third meeting of the group is coming up later this week and we always solicit topics from the group. So if anyone has anything pressing or anything in particular they wanna discuss, we'll do that first in addition to sort of just a check-in of what's going well, what's not, a little troubleshooting for anybody who needs it or wants it. Um, we're gonna do utilization tracking, which is I think really the key metric if you had to pick one metric to run your business in this field, in this boutique fitness world. The number one thing is really bodies in the studio, right? Like everything else can be adjusted but you need the customers, you need the people. And to know that and to watch the trends in that, I think is really valuable. So we're gonna go over that this week. We can share some of the ways we've done it, some of the things I've added to, Krista was obviously doing that before I took this job, but I've added a couple of ways of looking at it that I think are a little different from what they were doing before um, that I think are helpful looking. And as you have more data, it also becomes more helpful looking at graph, graphical representations of it and looking at it period over period. So Q1 of 24 versus Q1 of 23, things like that. So we can share some of that and hopefully 
have that be helpful. Yeah, no. And I think this is like from a couple things that you said that for instance, the Slack channel, right. Is, um, for those of you that are like, what's well, Slack Slack is, a basically like an internal communication. It's a communication system, right? You can, um, it's been great for us as a team because it keeps things out of your personal text and emails, which we all know how many of those we get a day. And so one of the things to have a Slack channel within the group, not only does it help communicate with you and with each other, but it teaches the admins how to use Slack so that they can then go to their owners possibly and be like, this is a really good tool. I think this would improve our communication system. So the indirect benefit to that is teaching people how to be more streamlined in their communication. Because I will say one thing as a business owner that keeps us from being productive is being interrupted 15 times with questions, right? And so it's one of the reasons that was really hard for me sometimes to work at the office because or at the studio because people would knock on the door. And of course, they want to say hi or whatever, which is great. I am one of those people that if you distract me in the middle of a task, I'm like, done. Like, I cannot regain my footing. And so, you know, having that kind of communication system where it's a checks and balances is really good. Um, the other thing I think for business owners is... We are all well-intentioned and we are all over the place at the same time. So Lauren being able to help navigate to the support teams, like how about if you approach your boss this way or maybe ask, I think you're doing the right thing. I think you're just asking the wrong question or how can you better support the instruct, like, you know, from both sides, right? What can you look for? And giving them the one, you're not alone. Like this is normal. Two, here's a way that might work well, right? And three, recognize like, what is the solution in your specific situation, you know? And and Lauren's metrics are really great. We actually had the community call yesterday. So I did the call with the owners yesterday. And um, three of them, my dog's gonna start barking now. So if you hear Duncan in the background, but three of the business owners, so we do the same thing when we look at metrics too. Three of the business owners, Q1 of 2024, were 29%, like 27%, 36%, and 29% growth year over year from Q1 to 2023 to Q1 of 2024. So three of them were over 25% improvement, which is really amazing, number one. And number two, it helps the business owners realize like, oh, the work I'm doing is paying off, right? And so I think from Lauren, now she's taking this a step further to allow the support team to understand those metrics, see those metrics, and then relay that information to the owners. So in terms of, let's say on metrics, for example, what are some things that you're seeing? I know it's only been a couple months, so I know it's not a lot, but you've, you have spoken to some of the owners. Like, what are some things that you see in this industry that is a challenge when it comes to metrics and data and analytics? Like, where do you see are like the kinks in the chain when, when it comes to that? I think, <clears throat> and it's probably across industries to a certain extent, but I think consistency in what you're looking at in terms of data is the number one thing and sourcing. Mm -hmm. So many Can you of explain us, what sourcing means? Yeah. yeah. So many of us in this field, in this industry, you're primary education is not business or spreadsheets or data numbers, whatever. So like being sure that you take the same data every time that you're looking at it, as simple as knowing like, okay, I took it from my practice management software. We use moments. I used the quote last week's number because they define the period by words, not by dates. So, um, 
and you look at the top line revenue each time or the top line sales each time. So just literally to make sure you're looking at the same number each period you're looking at. Like that right. simple, yeah. just to make sure you're comparing apples to apples so you don't hamstring yourself by looking at two different things and either showing yourself that you're doing better than you are or worse. And you're it's not even the right number. Metric. And that's so not even the right like, number. Yeah. Like you're just not, it's like looking in the wrong bag for the apple when you want to do it. You know what? Not. Let me give, let me give like a physical analogy to this. And I think you could appreciate this because maybe you've heard me say it before. It's like when women want to work, when we work legs, we want to work our butt, right? Cause it's so, but if you're doing lunges the wrong way, you're not even working the muscle you're trying to work. And so the work you're doing doesn't, necessarily mean anything. So from a physical perspective, that's like a good analogy to if you keep taking the number, but you're taking it from all different places, it might not even be the same number. And then you're not tracking the right data. Right. So even not within your software, for example, you might have QuickBooks, you might have a, well, you certainly have a bank account, you have a practice management software, maybe you keep a Excel ledger, you might keep a deposit ledger. So now you've got like four different places you could pull this number from, but it, the time periods aren't going to line up properly, you know, or Stripe gives you deposits. It doesn't line up exactly. So that's number one. It sounds simple, but it makes a huge difference in data integrity. Um, and then I think also for us, which was different for me in this industry was defining what you're tracking. So um, we have people that late cancel but the revenue is still included because we still collect revenue. And we have people that no show. Again, we still, that's our policy within a certain amount of, amount of time, the revenue is still in, included. So are you gonna include no shows? Are you gonna include late cancels? So you can imagine if you're looking at utilization, how what percent of this class of 10 spaces was full. So if there were, eight physical bodies in the room taking the class, but one person late canceled one hour before and one person no-showed, you actually, from a revenue perspective, have a full class, you are 100% utilized. Now, would you rather the person early cancel or canceled appropriately and have two more actual bodies in the room? Because there is an intangible benefit to having a full class, the energy in the room, the instructor's buzz, the like momentum or vibe in the studio, absolutely we'd rather have bodies. But if someone late cancels or no-shows, we couldn't fill that spot. We didn't have the opportunity to do it. And so that's why the people are charged. It's fair mm -hmm. to everyone. Um, but you have to know, am, am I including these numbers or am I not? And sometimes the software does it one way and our support team does it a different way. That's okay as long as we're clear and what we are and aren't including. So those numbers wise, I think those are the glitches I've come up with so far or the yeah. areas to pay attention to. Yeah. And Lauren's done a great job too. One of the things I like is, is you've, because of your experience with Excel or data entry can put it into a form that myself as a business owner can look at, which is graph form usually. So it's easy for me to look at the graph and be like, oh, this chart, this high or whatever is higher than the other one, right? Or the line's going up or the line's going down. And so she's been great to now teach. Like my, my belief is that we should get this information out to as many business owners as possible, because this is it. First of all, one, it's not proprietary information. Like anyone can figure out how to do a freaking Excel sheet, right? But not everyone has access to that. And it's overwhelming for business owners. Like many of us just don't have that skill set. So to have someone on your team and then for us then to be able to say, well, now we have this information, let us help other business owners learn this or help their support staff teach them, right? So it's just a way for us, for me, and then hence my team to say, we have this for you. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. Let us help you. And people can learn the stuff. So I know that you've said, like, what are some of the things that you found now working with eight of the people in our first group? Um, 
let's talk, let's first talk about things that surprised you with like the members when you were starting to get to know them. What are some things that maybe you were surprised by, if anything? I don't know if I was surprised. I was really impressed, actually. I think right now it's really hard to find good people. Um, and I think our group has really managed to find great people, which is so encouraging for so many reasons. But um, I think the people are really smart. Um, they're really organized. Like they've they've selected good people for this role and they're really hardworking, which I think are not such easy qualities to find these days, to yeah. be honest. Like those are the things you can't teach. Um, we can teach you how to make a spreadsheet. We can teach you how to make a graph. We can teach you, you know, how to market or send text messages to your clients or promote something like those things are teachable, but those like, uh, personality traits or like, um, work ethic, things like that are much harder to teach if, if it's possible at all. So I think I've been really, really impressed with the people that have come in and I've been impressed with their thoughtfulness in doing the work that they're doing for the owners and, um, their goal of being, of contributing to the success of the business. So as an administrative person, you're not a revenue generating person, right? You're a cost to the business, but they've really worked very hard, I think, to be able to contribute to that success um, for the owners. So hopefully these tools, their goal also generally has been to make life easier for the owners, for the clients, and to to streamline and eliminate extra steps. So something as simple as Slack avoids you having to call someone or text someone or remind them, you know, things like Asana tasks. I can set something for you for Friday when I know you're going to be at your desk and, and not worry about it. I know it's going to get your attention then. I don't have to talk to you about it. Or the agenda, right. setting aside a time to we meet weekly with the owners, which sounds so simple, seem to be kind of revolutionary to a lot of the businesses because it's hard to carve out time with your owner or your CEO to make sure you carve out 30 minutes or 60 minutes a week. And then you can address almost everything that's not an emergency, which hopefully the emergencies minimize with time. Um, and then you know you have it. So you don't have to be constantly interrupting them when they're doing yeah. the other things that they're doing. And making those one-on-ones meaningful, right? I think a lot of times people are like, oh, well, let's have a one-on-one, -on -one, but I don't know what we're actually talking about. And then that's what makes both parties feel like, I don't know what we got from here. So um, what are some of the questions or challenges that maybe some of the women, and I say women, because I think all of the support team are women too. Um, what are some of the things that they've, discussed or have come up in the group that that it's that's a challenge for them in their business or things that they have to navigate. I think the biggest thing so far is that time management piece mm -hmm. both in trying to manage their time with their boss mm -hmm. and also to manage the time between the day-to-day -day and the projects like the re repeating tasks the everyday management especially if they're also covering the front desk or the phones. And then the projects like trying to redo a website or plan an event or hire an onboard, that's been a big challenge for a lot of them that they've been tasked with. Um, literally, what steps do I need to do to onboard? How is this going to happen? And we've tried to help them automate some of that and we'll, and we'll continue to focus on that topic. But that was one. And the other one is for some of them, social media. Um, for those that aren't as experienced with it, trying to both manage it in terms of content creation, posting schedule, think like the literal logistics, and then the like, how do I do this? How much engagement do I need? You know, how much time should I spend on this? Those kinds of things. Yeah. And those are, I think, even for owners sometimes, like these are the same conversations, by the way, I have with the owners of like, I don't know how to create the content. I have time management issues. And so, and, and I would say probably owners are what's, what are listening to this podcast. So I'm going to just put a shout out out there to you guys. Like we are the problem. 
I'm just going to tell you right now. We are the bottleneck. We are the problem. 90, I'm going to say 90% because there's pro there. I'm not going to say everyone has a perfect support team. Like there are definitely situations where it's the support person that's not meeting expectations. However, 90% of the time they're not meeting the expectations because the owner didn't give them the right expectations or the owner is not taking the time to train them or give them somebody to train them. And so that's where we are the problem. And so we as owners need to be clear about what our expectations are and have hold people accountable and then also give them the, what the, the bandwidth, the time, the support to meet those expectations. Right. And then if it's continuing to be an issue, then it becomes like, you just have to say, is this a, my issue? Like I'm not training properly or this person might just not be right for the role. So if you were to, and you can even give examples of like us working together. Cause you know, Lauren definitely comes with a tremendous amount of experience, but you didn't, you weren't in boutique fitness before or like real, real, like small business like that, like boutique fitness, like service providing. So what are some things that you could say to owners that maybe they don't realize that could help with a situation or just advice that you would say things to think about from an owner's perspective? With respect to their admin team? Their support team. Like maybe they don't realize oh. like, hey, when you give your support team two days to create a project, you might think that it can be done in two days, but maybe not super realistic, right? Uh, so I think, and we've talked about this recently with some clients and 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 you and I have talked about it. Um, a couple of things, being really, really clear on the expectations. What do you think, you're giving and what do you think the other person is expecting to receive? I think that's really important to be clear on. And then you said this yesterday in a meeting we were in, um, what does done mean to you? Like, I think sending the emails done, you might think, um, you know, getting response is done or something like that, you know? Um, and I think just recognizing that the face-to-face -face interactions with the clients, if the support team is doing that piece, is very, very time consuming. Mm -hmm. um, and so just being realistic about how long a conversation takes, and some of ours take longer than others. Some are a two second text message, but some are a 15 minute conversation. So just being sort of aware of that or sensitive to it. Um, and I think supporting our, our support people um, as people too, right? Like we've had some situations where clients have um, been upset or been angry and we've had to, the support team takes the first hit kind of, so to speak. We try to protect sure. them, but Always. they do. So recognizing that and just acknowledging it. And then, you know, sometimes like a little Starbucks delivery doesn't hurt, you know, just yeah. being generous of spirit with the people that are making, hopefully making your life and your day-to-day -day easier. So yeah. try to be very aware of that and, and be the buffer for them as well. Yeah. And, you know, for owners, it's what uh, I don't say like, Hey, you're the problem to like berate you. What I'm just saying is oftentimes we're the problem. So it's okay. If you've fucked up before, like, I definitely did. But when you know better, you do better. Right. And so when you have more information, you know how to do better. Like maybe you're like, mm, I should have seen that, or I should mention that in the interview process, or I should, I'm not, I know this person's not going to work out. I'm not going to just hire a body to fill because in the end it's going to be difficult, you know? So when we know better, we do better. And so Lauren and I, right now, this process, this group is rolled out to members of our inner circle and members of FitBiz Foundation. So if you're just new and you're figuring, you're like, what are those? So FitBiz Foundations is our kind of um, initial uh, business mentorship program specifically for boutique fitness and wellness and healthcare providers. It's why we call it Beyond the Movement. Take you're going beyond what you do for you know your practice and learning how to do business. So I say it's like the emerging business owner that's 
getting the six figures and beyond and learning how to do systems, how to hire, really structure their business. The inner circle is basically Fitbiz Foundations on steroids. So once you've grown past a quarter of a million dollars in revenue, and you're really trying to empower the team so that you as CEO can really pull back from the day-to-day operations and instead work on being a better leader, a better manager, a better visionary, and how you can streamline all of that, that's the inner circle, okay? So both programs, I mean, I think are phenomenal. Lauren has been, you know, privy to hear both conversations and she's been a wealth of information. We just started adding this as an asset to the group. Um, And we are considering based on this cohort, if we will open this up to other um, female business owners that are interested in having their support team trained. So right now, Inner Circle members and FitBiz Foundations members get a little bit of a discount to join the program because they're already members in our group. Um, We were doing a six-month beta, so test, which basically means we're testing it out until I think June or something like that. And then we're going to decide... Are we going to keep pushing it? Are we going to open it up to the general population? Um, and if so, what the basically the container right now is Lauren meets with them once a month for about a 90 minute meeting, correct? So via mm-hmm. Zoom, she does topics or they bring questions. She is on a Slack channel um, for additional support. There are additional like one calls available kind of like as an add-on if necessary, although Lauren is super giving of her time all the time. Um, So if this is something that interests you, whether you're a member of our Fitbiz Foundations or not, I would maybe DM me over on Instagram. You can DM me at Krista Gurka and just say, hey, I heard your podcast. I might be interested in having one of my support staff join the grow program. It's like, let us let, what was that in, um, was that movie uh, uh, with Tom Cruise and Cuba Gooding Jr.? Was it? Help me help you. Like, let me, let us help you. Because sometimes as owners, we don't always have the time to do the best training and invest in your team. Invest in your team to help them help you, basically, and be you know, the best support team and, and be able to transition into managerial roles and things like that. And so if you're interested, I would DM me on Instagram. If you're not on Instagram, you can email me Krista at Pilates the Grove.com. Let us know you're interested. We're starting a wait list just so that we know if there's, you know, interest in other people that might not be members of FitBiz Foundations or, or Inner Circle. So, um, If you were to tell, if you were basically having a discovery call with me as an owner, and I was trying to figure out if this is the right program for my support person, what would you say maybe like in closing to make me feel like this is like a no brainer for me? Um, I think that having your person have support outside of the business is really, really valuable, both in their peer group and in somebody with a little more experience like me. And I think also solidifying those main tenants of the process part of the business is really, really helpful. And it will pay off in spades over time to just have somebody doing those those heavy lifts that really help make a huge difference in the day-to-day quality of your life as a business owner. Yeah, for sure. And the group is small. You get a lot of personalized care. And again, people are looking for just support from their owners. And so if if they see this as like, they're investing in me because they want me to be the best version of myself, then, you know, that's like a great tool. They're giving them like, a, and sometimes people, it's, it's like when kids going to their parents, like they won't necessarily, sometimes it's like good to get outside input, right? So having a place where your team can go to ask questions, from, and then they get ideas. They share ideas with each other, you know? Yeah, I think so. also sometimes it's the impetus for that final push. Like, oh, we've been meaning to do Slack. We've been meaning to get on Asana. Sometimes having the group and the structure just gives you that little push over the top to make it happen, to carve yeah. out the time 
to focus on it, to show that you're, it, it has value to you and that you want to create some space for that to happen, I think is really, has been helpful for some of the participants as well. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I, I, I don't know if you get this, but I get this on our call sometimes where, you know, I'll ask people like, does anyone else have a question? And a lot of people are like, no, you know what? I didn't have a question, but I actually got a lot of really great ideas by listening to this call. And so I have a lot of stuff here. I just like to come in here. And I think that's also the power of the group, right? So sure. do you have any final thoughts, Lauren? No, we're really excited to be able to offer this. Um, I think and hope that it's valuable to the owners and to the support staff and um, sort of excited to just see where it goes and where it takes us. I think it'll continue to evolve over time and just happy to be doing it. Yeah. And I mean, I can say you are a plethora of resources and really a godsend, not only to myself personally, to the team at Pilates in the Grove, to the clients at Pilates in the Grove and the amount of just like the moving forward that you have been directly related to in the business is amazing. So I thank you for everything you do for us and for our clients. And, you know, I can tell you owners, it is a great feeling when you have someone that's accountable, that you trust, that just takes things off your plate and gives you the bandwidth to do the things that you really should be spending your time on. Right. And so sometimes with business owners, I'm like, I don't think you're really burnt out. I just think you're doing the wrong shit. Like you're just focused, you're doing the wrong stuff, which is making you feel burnt out, but it's not, you're not really burnt out. You're just doing the wrong stuff. And hence you feel burnt out because you're doing stuff you don't really want to be doing. So these kind of programs are great. And so thank you. Thank you for coming on the podcast with me. We actually, Lauren will be back in a couple of weeks because we will be doing our Pilates in the Grove Q1 review. And basically what we'll be doing is showing you kind of how we do our review so that you can learn how to do a review, how to look at metrics objectively, and then how to plan accordingly moving forward and understand the story behind the numbers. And so she'll be back in a couple of weeks. And so until then, be sure to turn in, tune in next every Tuesday when our new podcast episode drops. And until next time, my friends, bye for now. Mm -hmm.